Hello, I'm Ryan Montblu, and I am not an alcoholic. I swear. Yeah, the live videos was, uh, I got inspired by, um, I think the site is called Blogatech, and they call them takeaway shows. My girlfriend showed me this site where they just record all these bands in Paris, like just live in some weird setting, um, just, uh, just playing their tunes, and I just figured we could do that for all the songs on our record. I thought it'd be a fun idea. We didn't, we, I basically decided early on to do them all, which I, was kind of more work than I had, than I had originally thought it was going to be. Because uh, there's 14 tracks on the record, so we had to make 14 videos. But uh, but it was fun. But So, yeah, like the idea all along was to make them for every single song because I figured we could do all s sorts of fun stuff and different lineups and, you know, you name it. I ha I did, like, as I went, I would sort of just try to get a concept for different videos. You know, I just tried to, like, I didn't have, I don't know, I didn't have too many visions right away. Like, we just, like the first one we did, we just... We were all set up to shoot in this backyard by this beautiful cow pasture, and then it started to rain. So then we just took all the stuff out of the van and went into the van. And it's like we weren't planning to do that song in there. We just started playing, and like that was one of the songs we did. So I don't know. It was it was interesting. Like I've never done anything like that before. So it was interesting to try to come up with like concepts for these little videos. And and uh, you know the idea of them always was it was supposed to be just homemade and and just you know just us just doing our thing. It was kind of funny like that because, like I said, like the idea was was always to do them uh, just homemade and just do us, and we would shoot them on our own. And then, like, but then as it turned out, like I had all uh, like when I started putting the feelers out, I had all these friends who were like pro video people and had these cameras. So it's like we went to do one homemade shoot, and a friend of ours just showed up. He had been working on a movie set, and he just showed up with a sixty thousand dollar camera, and it was like. And I just had my couple of little dinky mics set up for the sound, and it was like, okay, well, it looked really good. So, you know, it was like a blessing and a curse to have friends with all this fancy equipment. So we just, I mean, but, but, I mean, that's the thing. Like, they were all just, like, kind of on the fly and just us playing. The recording process for this record was, was the same in a lot of ways than our previous ones where we... We tracked a lot of stuff live and just and just we sort of did it fairly quickly. But the big difference this time was we had a producer. We had Martin Sexton and his ears to fall back on. And then he did a great job of like of like uh, just allowing us to sound like ourselves in a weird way. You know, like in the past we had like we, we added string sections and horns and we just tried to make everything perfect and kind of airtight and I think I think from that we learned to sort of not do that as much and just really like let the air in the room a little bit you know and um, and like we're still learning to make records but I'm, I'm sure that this is the best one that we've ever made yet so I don't know like the first record we made together as a band was we had been playing for two years on the road all this material and we were so ready to do those tunes it was just like we banged it out and then um, the second one was a little more like experimenting in the studio. But this one was, I guess, he, he I mean, we had, play, we had been playing with him at like rehearsing as his backup band for his upcoming tour. So he knew what we could do live and he had seen us live. And so I think, I think, yeah, I think like he just basically got us into a headspace that just allowed us to just play and not worry about, oh, I'm in the studio, this has to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, I try not to worry about, when we're in the studio, I try not to worry about how we're going to do it live, because usually we can. We, we usually don't stray, especially on this record, like, we're not straying too far from what we do. I mean, this record, this new record is really like, it's the six of us in a room basically doing what we do. So it's not that much of a stretch. But I always figure, like, even if we did do some strange thing in the studio, I just want it to sound good and be enjoyable to listen to, and then we'll figure out the live thing later. We play live so much that it's like, you know, if we have fun playing something, we'll figure out how to pull it off live in a way that we like. I think in the future, I would like more to not worry about the live thing as opposed to, like, just making really good tracks. And I think up till now, we've done just that. Like, we've, well, not that, we've done what you said, which was, like, really just try to capture our live thing, you know? And, and, uh, and like, I, I think we did that. I mean, I think we, that's, this, that's how you do that is, like, not worrying about it and just playing together and just trying to capture it. I think I've learned to take myself a little less seriously as I go. I hope so anyway. You know, I think when you start out, you just kind of want to take over the world, and, and then you realize just a lot of lessons along the way, you know? And I think, um, but I think also at the same time, I've learned to be more trusting of myself as a musician and, and just as a singer and whatever, and just, 
you learn your limitations and within that you learn to like you learn to trust yourself even more with what you can do so i don't know i'd like to think i've gotten better over the years and i still have that's the, the main thing with us is like we still have a long way to go as far as creatively and and we just always feel like we can get so much better and to push myself to get better i practice you know like i could because i always just that's how i started doing this is i just played and played and played and played and that's i think how a lot of people start is like you just sit and play in your bedroom and whatever feels good you just keep playing and playing and playing and i still do that but like there comes a time to like sit down and practice and practice and practice and do the things that like don't feel good at first. So I think that's been a big lesson for me is to actually do that. And my guys inspire me to do that because they're more, you know, sort of more accomplished practice musicians. So that's been a big one. And then as far as inspiration, I think I just try to like, I think like now that I've been doing this for a living for, you know, many years, seven years or something, um, you just realize that like you got to go to work. It's like, you learn to capture those moments of initial inspiration when they come and that's really important and you have to do that but then you can't just rely on that like you can't just rely on this like muse to sweep in and like write the songs for you like you have to take that inspiration and then like you got to sit down and go to work so i think that that's been pretty important to do that you know just have a work ethic about it and within that still find the inspiration and the creativity and not you know not be like mechanical about it but have a work ethic in my blog and in my email, everything, in my communication with anybody, like I just, tr and in songs, like I just try to be as honest as I can. So with the blogs, it's like I'm just trying to reflect as honestly as I can my experience as a musician on the road and, and everything. I'm not, you know, it's it's tempting to try to sugarcoat stuff and be like, the show last night rocked so hard when it like, it kind of didn't. So if it kind of didn't, I usually am like, you know, the show kind of didn't rock last night or, or whatever. But no, I, I think it's just important to, to be honest, with, you know, and reflect honestly, as honestly as I can about my experience. So part of my experience lately in the last few months is that, like, I haven't been drinking booze or smoking weed or anything, which is, like, very commonplace on the road for a musician. For It's just kind of everywhere, you know. So, and I've done my fair share of it over the years, and I'm just, you know, trying to, like, just not do it for a while. And so, you know, that was a, a, just sort of a big part of my experience in the last few months, and that's why I reflected on it. But then it's like when you say that, I think it gets a reaction because everybody assumes that like, and, and because of some of my lyrics, like everybody assumes that I'm in recovery and that like I have a problem and, and then I like I'm trying to overcome it because I'm in addiction and it's like I'm not. I'm just trying to not get there. So I don't know. I think that's why it gets the reaction. Um, the record did just come out, but lots of times when that happens, like I'm so ready to go on, on other material. I feel like because you get into this work zone of getting – a lot of material done for a record you kind of continue and then you tend to get these like bursts of inspiration so i already have like a million other tunes i'm working on and i'm already psyched to make the next record so i don't know i think we're going to try i mean certainly in this upcoming year in 2011 we're going to try to put out another one and uh i don't know how or where or when or whatever but i just know like we already have like a lot of new tunes we're working on so there's a little bit of both. We've been doing so much with the band over the last few years that it's been, I mean, I, j I did just put out a solo record a couple of years ago. So that's always somewhere in the background. The, the band is at the forefront, and I think more and more we're learning to write together, and we're learning to to play together better and compose, and, and then and, uh, so I write with that in mind. But I also always, like, you know, if I write something that feels good just playing alone, then I, then I will just do it. I mean, it's whatever it calls for. I think the hazard that you run into in the band is that is having everybody play on everything all the time, you know? It's like, it's 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 in, it's challenging to kind of figure out like what the best arrangement is. Hello, I'm Ryan Montblue of the aptly titled Ryan Montblue Band. 